course you know who I am. You're watching this at the gathering. And one thing I like to explain to you is, is I just, well, I'm right now in Arizona, and I'm with probably what, what I consider probably one of the most elite martial art groups of all time. And they come through a, through a gentleman by the name of Robert Trias. <clears throat> Trias, or old sensei Trias, is a founder of what they call the USKA, United States Karate Association. And he was very unique in the fact that, number one, he was a compassionate man, cared about the arts, probably more than anybody I've seen over the last, ever since I've been in martial arts. So who are you going to be talking to? You're going to be talking to and listening to some people that uh, I met many years ago. The first guy I'm going to talk, talk to, i got to bring it up. He didn't know about it until yesterday, I think. When I, one time, I got to work out with this gentleman. His name was John Hutchcraft. He was one of all Sensei Trias' top people. And I remember what he did. Um, I think it was the, uh, the State Comité, you know, at one point, he designated. Yeah. He hit me, he knocked me out. He didn't know about it until yesterday. I just saw white. Beautiful punch, beautiful punch. But he was very, very fortunate to have been able to study with Grand Master Trias. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to ask him to talk to you a little bit about his humble beginnings, a little bit about uh, O Sensei, yeah. and a little bit about your feelings about Karate Do, okay. and things like that. Well, it sounds like a sounds like a plan. And thank you so much for uh, this opportunity to tell you a little, you know, to, to talk a little bit about O Sensei Trias. Uh, this weekend re uh, marks the 30th anniversary of his death, and. Um, he was a remarkable man in so many ways, and the people here uh, love him because they, they hold those traditions dear to their heart, and they're remembering him more this weekend. Uh, and and it's a, it's, it's, it's a, the plan is to keep his memory real strong, because he was, you know, some dispute this, but he, I believe that he started the first karate school in the United States April 15, 1946. It's marked in the Library of Congress uh, and recorded there. And there may be others that would dispute that. But uh, you know, he, he, we all agree that he was a pioneer. So he influenced us all. We may have taken different paths later on, as I did. But his influence on all of us uh, was tremendous. And um, also, those of you who don't know this, but when I first met these guys, when I first met O Sensei Trias, I was so impressed by his, number one, his vast knowledge of history and the arts. He gave me several lectures. Um, the lectures he gave me made so much sense because it dealt with martial arts. It dealt with what we would call karate do, and how important the preservation of those things are. You see these gentlemen move. Um, and you see them hit. They know how to hit. Um, and Mr. Hutchcraft, uh, actually, and just between you and I, ever since he did what he did to me, I've always been looking for him. <laughs> but, but see, he didn't even bring it in, so that's good. So it didn't happen. But anyway, uh, these guys, you have the opportunity and you have the abilities to learn from them. You must do it. You must do it. Anybody that comes in front of you, that has knowledge. It is your duty to pay attention, to learn, and to listen. Uh, those of you that are here at the gathering, uh, it is important that you study everything you can, whether you're, you're learning Shiriru, whether you're learning uh, uh, Ili Chuan, whether you're learning uh, Daituru Aikijits, whether you're learning Philippine arts and Indonesia. It's important that you know it's history. Uh, you gotta remember, there's one thing that makes the arts degraded and it is when we start thinking of ourselves you got to start thinking of it that is the arts um, Mr. Hutchcraft do you want to say anything to people in the martial arts today give me some advice well I can remember my teacher is uh, Master Philip W. Keppel who was a senior student for Mr. Trias for many years studied with him for 22 years and uh, and at one point in our career we went on to do much more Seito Shou and Ru, which I have practiced since 1984. But the thing about it is, uh, one time he asked me, well, how would you define karate 
in your career, how has it affected you? And I said, well, since they, now that I'm a little bit longer in the tooth, and you know, I've been doing this for 51 years now, I started when I was 18, ah, just told you my age. Um, it's changed over the years, the, uh, and it's importance to me and it's how it's affected my life. I can remember when I was a kid starting in the karate school, like everybody else, I had someone in the back of my mind that I wanted to scrap out because I thought that was what karate was. And so, when you know, you're a young man, you're 18 years old, and then you have different feelings about what it is you're, you're, you're learning, what you're going to use it for, and how it's going to affect you. And now, later on in my years, as I've, uh, I'm an old student, I'm still an old student, and I'm passionate about learning, and that's become more of my focus now, as I, and it's become more of a health-oriented, I need to do this for myself because it's keeping me in relatively good shape. And I really enjoy this, and I enjoy trying to impart, try it. what I'm really trying to do is help my students avoid the mistakes I made. In bad training technique, bad, uh, you know, uh, we did some things. Well, can I give you an example? Oh, yeah. I'm going to have a shoulder replaced here on August, you know, August 20th. I don't mind telling you that. And the reason I'm having that replaced is because for years I competed in kata. Well, in kata, uh, you know, the Okinawans would tell you if you were working, you were worth about 80%. That's, that's, good. that's good. But work a lot of bakawa. Hit something. Well, if you're trained to do a tournament and you want to win, which is a whole different uh, attitude about martial arts, uh, winning, uh, I think martial arts now is surviving if I've ever have an encounter. But, you know, I, I would work as hard as I could in the air to impress someone else who was judging me. Well, guess what that does? Orthopedic surgeons all over the world are saying, Hey, you can't throw a punch as fast and hard as you can. Stop it midair and do that for 45 or 50 years and expect your joints to be fine. They give up. They go, you know, they, they grind the dust. And so we learn from those mistakes. And sometimes uh, we can just, you know, help our students to be healthier in the martial arts. It's, it's better for them. Hip replacements, shoulder replacements. Neck, you know, neck issues can come about from bad training. But uh, a friend of mine, uh, Sakichi Iha, and uh, he's a Tenthan Shidokan Shonru in Lansing, Michigan, has continuously stated that martial arts should be natural. It's natural movement. If you're moving natural, you know, stances should be natural. Stepping should be natural. Moving your hands should be natural. And it stuck with me when I met him about 22 years ago. I said, I'm doing some unnatural things. <coughs> I want to do unnatural things. You, you know, John, I, I, when we're talking, <coughs> in Mythosi's writings, he stated that what Kemp was, it's a study of natural law. That's what it is. It's a study of the physical and spiritual self of who we are pertaining to nature and natural laws. And that's what you're talking about. And the biggest thing, I think, and you agree, on what you, you just did, uh, when we're young, we have a tendency to be foolish. We do. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Yeah. And sometimes our teachers were not that much older than us, mm -hmm. and we were just trying to copy them and be as good as we could be and copy them. And they didn't quite, you know, some of my, my early on teachers, well, one of them I was older than him. And, uh, uh, you know, I wanted to copy his tremendous strength. He was very strong. Teacher. His name was Randy Coleman, and uh, uh, he was he was an incredible, uh, incredibly strong karate. Guy. I tried to be as strong as him, could never achieve it, but <laughs> I wore out parts trying to. And uh, you know, the square kibidachis with the feet pointed forward. Well, that's an, I don't know how much more natural you can get. And a lot of our guys in Fury Roof, uh, surprise had hip replacements later on because of this the natural method of trying to stand. So you go back to Okinawa and then you, go, you don't see that stance. You see shikotachi with the knees in the natural placement over the, over the, over the feet. 
and it takes less pressure off the hips. And um, just those are two small examples of what natural training can do for you. You know, how you can preserve longevity in training. Uh, it makes you stronger uh, rather than weaker over time. When I first met you, what was your mindset back then? We both had different mindsets. Oh yeah, I think I was probably. Oh, I know I, I, I know for sure that I was probably pretty immature in my mindset. And by that I mean, what was I trying to accomplish? Well, when I met you in um, '81, and I think later on again in '82. I just wanted to be a chief instructor for all sensei really, really bad. And I would do, like any athlete, I would do anything it took. Uh, plus train hard to do that. And uh, my focus was uh, on spitting back information that I had gained or learned exactly as I learned it, not giving it much thought up here. Just, just doing it and becoming very good at it. So you know, you could, just, you could. That was, that was, that was. I was 31 or 32 years old at the time, and I was still trying to accomplish it. Uh, maybe reach somebody else's expectations of what I should be. Rather than uh, open heart uh, and. I didn't, you know, I didn't, at that time I don't think I had an open heart to let allow other people's information to come in and affect me. I was a little bit closed off. You know, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm learning, this is the best, I'm not going to listen to anybody else, and so you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you, I'll smile, we can be friends, but you know, I, you know, I wasn't open to other things. I think a lot of us are happy. You know, all of us on our journey. You know, when uh, uh, I first met all you guys, and, and, well, <coughs> we shared some of the stories that uh, you know, I first did with you guys. And, uh, and when I see, uh, just like you talk about Randy Holman, uh, what he impressed me back then was his uh, knowledge of weaponry. Good weapons. He was. And yeah, is he, is he gone now? No, he's uh, uh, still living in Peoria, Illinois. Uh, he has a small dojo, which I hear is just closed. Uh, <clears throat> but he, he's uh, still active, but with a very small group of people. I'm going to throw some names out at you, and these are, these are some of the people we saw this weekend. This weekend was very, very good, because uh, we went on a bus and went to the various different dojos that Osensei Tree has had, we went to the uh, cemetery. And, uh, Three years later, we rest. We went to one of his favorite restaurants, and um, uh, we did we did a, a, a lot of talking. We were talking about stories, so I'm gonna bring up some names of people, okay, to you. And what I'd like you to do, if you can, is reflect on some of them, who they meant to you, okay, and what kind of things can you remember about some of them? Okay, <coughs> let's start with Randy Holman. Randy Holman was uh, a USKA national kata champion. And he was, as Mr. Trius recognized, uh, one of Mr. Keppel's finest uh, and strongest students. And uh, uh, he he could produce. He, could, he had very good centering, good strength, um, and uh, he was impressive. He, he was very very impressive when he did kata, uh, and he won a lot. And I was his student. For 11 years, uh, he's a good man, and uh, uh, I hope his health is good. I wish him well. Uh, in 1986, he wanted to he ventured off to do something called unante uh, or nahate, and so he went in a different direction. After he'd already changed to Matsumoto Sato from Shuri Ru, and I could not any longer. I myself changed that many times, so I stayed with lots more Sato because I saw the benefits of it, and uh, that was. But he's a, he's a good, good karateka to this day. He's still training, still studying. I hope. Pete Rubino. Pete Rubino, I can remember Pete Rubino in the brown belt, and I was just a 
the beginning Bronco. And he was fast and impressive and quick with the back fist, great drop kick, and uh, uh, fun to be around. And he still is, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Robert Bowles. Mr. Uh, Bowles. Uh, Mr. Bowles has been a, uh, a friend and uh, an influence on me uh, ever since I started doing Sherry Rue when the standards were um, were uh, uh, brought together about 1972. And I can remember watching him do content in Memphis, Tennessee in 1972 and wanting to be just like him. Uh, he was uh, one of the first people that wore the Chief Instructor Pine, and uh, you know, we, we've always had a, a pretty good relationship, and, and he's someone I could ask for advice, uh, considering my mentor even today, even though we do different types of karate, um, and a friend. He's, and look what he's done. He started the International Shuri Ru Association, and I think he's the one most responsible for taking Shuri Ru forward, both senseis. I think both since they could see what he's done with the Shiriru today, uh, he would be very, you know, he'd be happy. To, this is this is the direction. He did it well. I agree. I agree. Uh, somebody, and I, the first time I met him, I heard a lot of him, um, on a bus ride, you know, uh, was Glenn Keeney. Oh, Mr. Keeney, the fox. Uh, explain why they called him the fox. Well, he was sneaky. And when he was, and his, when he would do uh, support kumite, uh, he would give you the impression that you could rush him and maybe come over the top of him and then he'd plant his size 13 in your stomach and it, would, and he was, it could slide up under any block that you would try to put on it and he was really, really quick. Um, he, people called him the fox. He, he, he would plan his, his matches so he, would, uh, he, could, he could identify your weak spots. One thing, story he told me one time is he was lining up with a group of people for coming day. Had the guy next to him. He, said, he, said, he asked Mr. Keeney how he's doing. Mr. Keeney says, "I've never had a bad day in my life." That's why he says retorted. He says, "How are you doing?" He says, well, I got this knee and I got this shoulder. And, and Glenn looked at him and said, "Thank you for telling." Me. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, he he knew where to look. Yeah. Mr. Walker. Joe Walker. Well, Joe, I've known Joe since we were in Mr. Holland's dojo back in Peoria, Illinois. And uh, he was a good friend. We, we fought the battles together as far as growing up in that dojo, which it wasn't easy to do. Um, I won't get into the, all of that. But he was, a, uh, he was a good peer at a time when I needed a friend to you know, work through 11 years. A gentleman that showed me a copy of the Sepsi Trios one time uh, contacted me after the Nebraska. <coughs> well, Sensei was checking me out because of the Tulsi connection. And uh, he instructed uh, Mr. Mosley to teach me Don and Shokata. Okay, so a little bit about some of the information you know about Rick Mosley as far as his martial arts. And uh, why do you think the Sensei Trios wanted me to learn Don and Shokata? Done in show, cutting through the fireside form is what you know. And I'm not sure, real sure, of the origins of done in show, but I don't. I do know that I, I really enjoy that cut myself, and uh, uh, I still work it from time to time. Uh, Dirk Mosig was a voracious uh, karate guy, and he, he came from a Shoan Ru style, and. About the time, about 1980 or 79 or 80, uh, in fact, he came to Waterloo uh, to learn some Shuri Rukatas from uh, me and our guys. And I, I left Waterloo in 79, it was right about, eight, before seven, about 78 or 79. And he, he, was, uh, he was a sponge. And he took it serious, and he impressed O-sensei with his desire to learn. And uh, he taught everything exactly like Oh Sensei taught him to do it. And he was helpful. He was intelligent. He's got a he was a, he was a very he's a very extremely intelligent person. He got a doctorate in 
in philosophy. And uh, uh, he helped Sensei an awful lot. He spoke Spanish and they could go to South America. He helped him there. And uh, he was uh, an integral part of uh, uh, assisting Sensei through some, some of the uh, uh, seminars there. And also in writing his books and his thoughts. He was a, a desire, he was, he was, a, he was much uh, appreciated by Mr. Trias. As a gentleman that uh, I saw, we were very happy to see each other. And he'd actually been at the gathering a couple of times. That was uh, Mr. Johnny Leinbarger. What can you tell us about Johnny? Oh, well, I remember. Some of this is Kumite Korea. Well, I remember when he first came to the Sensei's Dojo and we're sitting at dinner and, and, he, and, and Johnny Leinbarger is sitting across from me and Mr. Trias says, Johnny, meaning me. I want you to meet Johnny Leinbarger. He's he started the dojo and his kumite is beautiful. You know how Mr. Trias would roll some of his words and mispronounce a lot of them. I think it was sometimes on purpose, but it, it's fun to listen to him talk. He needs his kumite is beautiful, and he's going to be a world champion. And uh, you know I looked across the table and I thought, okay, now you got to prove it, you know. And so he did in short order, and he became very very good. And, uh, uh, since it's really proud of him. He did, he, he did good karateka, good, good man. Yeah, good, good, good fighter. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll, I'll throw some other people that, uh, people that I know, that I know you've met. Uh, from what I understand, the very first world champion was Victor Moore. Victor Do you remember Moore. about Victor Moore? I remember seeing Victor Moore. Uh, what a powerful individual. Huge chest, intimidating. Uh, and I don't know a lot of his history. I do know that, you know, some issues that, that he created within USKA later on um, created a rift to the point where Mr. Keppel and some of the people in the third region left. Mm. And one person can't do that. All, there were other issues, but I remember he was a, but as a karateka, he was a strong, strong man. Right, we talk about fighters. I got to bring this guy up because he's a very, very good friend of mine, uh, Jerry Pennington. Do you know much about Jerry? I don't. Um, I give you some help. Last name again? Pennington. Oh, Penny. Oh, I did meet him a couple times. He's a great fighter, man. Yeah, Jerry really? was great, great fighter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know him very well. I know he claims he claims old sensei. Yeah, he event Pennington? Yeah. Pennington, Jerry, okay. Jerry Pennington yeah. from Fort. Well he's no longer he's in Oregon now. Oh okay. he used to be, yeah. Okay. Well he were, he uh, at one time ran one of Mr. Keppel schools. Yep. And he also ran uh, Mike Stone's school. Okay. In uh, in LA. Yeah. Met him once, but I uh, everybody speaks highly of him. Oh yeah, it's a great martial artist. Can you think of anybody that that you remember okay, share a couple of Stories, if you will, about old Sensei Trias. We'll keep it quick. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, before we get into that, before we get into that, you know, uh, old Sensei had some uh, a lot of good female competitors. One, Sandy Bowles. Yes. Another one, uh, Maria Evans. Maria Dost. Yes. She uh, developed over time. Yeah. Yeah. Your impressions of that. Well, I remember meeting Sandy Bowles when in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, because I'm an old Iowa farm boy for the first 35 years of my life. And uh, uh, but when I was 18 and had just started karate, my first teacher, John Black, took us up to Cedar Falls, or Cedar Rapids, Iowa, to train with Mr. Bowles' dojo. That was my first interaction with another dojo. And there's Sandy, and she's a cute little thing in the yellow belt, and. And Mr. Bowles is a second degree black belt, which is, back in those days, that was huge. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, second or third degree black belt is a very, very yeah. high grade. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and I remember uh, going in there and, and meeting her, and, and, uh, uh, and she just had this smile that has never, she, you, she still has today. Just a joy to see her. It's a good friend over the years, and, and a great supporter of O Sensei and USKA, and, and later on. ISA, and she, you know, can't say enough great things about Sandy. Another person that you haven't asked me about that I want to tell you about, who 
is pretty cool. His name is John Keenan. Oh, okay, yeah. Count Dante? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had a he had an organization called the World Karate Federation early on after he left Old mm -hmm. and, and, he, and he was a uh, he was a dynamic <laughs> signed my green belt certificate in 1969. And he was just as weird as people tell him. But he was a great karate guy. And the stories they tell about him being in, the, in Chicago, leading a, a lion down uh, Michigan Avenue uh, for publicity. He, he actually did that. He was a hairdresser for the Playboy Mansion at that time. And uh, you know, they had the beautiful uh, beard, mustache, and goatee. And I, when I met him, he had Toreador pants and Spanish cut style brown boots on and, and a, uh, it's kind of a fluffy shirt and this jacket. He looked like a, a Spanish uh, 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 dignitary. And I thought, well, you know, this guy doesn't look that mean. <laughs> but I saw a demonstration later on that he did. And man, uh, he, he had very, very quick hands. And, and he was a good athlete. He's the one that started the Dojo Wars. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. And his his student Vic Konsevic, right, was the was the gentleman that got got killed. Killed. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't good. I guess the Green Dragons, as I recall. Black Dragon. Right? Yeah, it could the be. Black Dragon. It was a dragon. It was yeah. a dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, is there anything that you want to share about Osante Tracy? Yeah, he would. As, we can talk ad nauseum about his karate skills and what he did, but the, he was a he was a very feeling, uh, intuitive, uh, and emotional man. Uh, we had some wonderful moments together, uh, and he said, "John, he said, never trust a man who doesn't drink, swear, or cry." <laughs> you know, I, I still use that to this day because he, can, can he you do that. This is for somebody in particular. Can you say that again? Never trust a man that doesn't what? Doesn't drink, swear, or cry. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about a guy that cried at Lassie. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, you know, and I, I, I don't even know why I forgot because he, he became a very good friend of mine. That's Ridgely Abel. Oh my. And we got to bring up John Pachibas. Oh. Oh, that's it. Those two, when I made chief instructor, instructor finally, I can remember, and I get a little bit emotional about this, because I'm sitting between them and I'm on a couch. There's originally on my left and John Pachi was on my right. And that was the day, you know, since they came in and said, well, you are my new chief instructors. And he gave us our patches. And, and um, They're both gone now. And Ridgely was like a, uh, he was older than I was, and he was like an older brother a little bit. And he appreciated, I didn't have a lot of great qualities, but he appreciated the qualities I had. And he, he took the Shuri Roof system on a good path too in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And uh, while he had some, has some great students, a great great man. Stu and a great man, and a great tradition that still is there to this day. And Mr. Pachivas, uh, what a passionate man he was about uh, his students. You know, he really would do, he was a good teacher and uh, uh, great memories. You know, John, one of the nicest things that ever happened, and it was originally, I think it was originally Mr. Bowles and Mr. Rabino gave me a sign, the autograph. A Bible. They all autographed it and gave it to me. And absolutely wonderful. Mr. Abel was a very, very spiritual man. Yes, he was. And uh, that meant old sense it was. A lot of people don't realize that. And uh, so when we think in terms of martial arts, there is a spiritual side, not just the physical side. When we talk about natural laws, that's what a lot of it is. And uh, it's like, uh, as you and I, uh, do you have anything you'd like to tell me? 
Well, I, I can just remember th those were some great formative years, mm -hmm. and I look back at those years as, as necessary years in my growth in karate today. And I'm, I'm 69. I look forward to the next. I feel like an old student now, and I meet you, and I and I and I uh, uh, meet some peers and and, and folks who you know, obviously have have. That I can I can learn a lot from. There's so much there's so much to learn and there's so little time. And so you have to say, okay, now instead of trying to learn it all, let me see if I can digest principles. I don't need to learn more techniques. Yeah, I think I have enough techniques now. I I want to learn principles. How do I how do I Involved this. Give me a principle, and then I think I have enough to go forward uh, and, and uh, continue my my training and learning. And that's how that's how it is right now. Do I, you you invited me to go to Michigan? I'd yes. love to do that. We'll have a good time. Oh, we will. We'll have a good time. You'll love my little state. My little state. This is my new state of where, Michigan. Where, where in Michigan? Right here. No. Uh, East Lansing, Lansing, Michigan. Okay. No. I'm, yeah, I've been to Lansing. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, there's some great karate people there. Uh, I'll give them, you know, I want to mention Iha Sakichi. Uh, Iha Sakichi is a student of Miyahira Sensei, who is a student of Shibata. And Iha Sakichi Iha's 10th dot, he just celebrated his Okinawan 88th birthday here coming up. They'll be doing a big celebration in Okinawa for him. Oh, that's great. And he's been a friend over the years uh, and taught me, I think he set me on a path that, that helped me learn how to soft block. Mm -hmm. Very, very soft blocking, if you want to call it blocking at all, and, and quick striking and entering body change. And uh, you know, my teacher, uh, Sensei Keppel, uh, I just stopped to think about it today. I've been my teacher for 25 years now. And you know, he's taught me so much about centering and entering uh, and body change. It completely, those two people uh, completely changed my karate. It, not, it doesn't look anything like what well, I used to do in Shiro. You know you're speaking my language, don't you? <laughs> I haven't even seen that garbage on the internet. Uh, and you're speaking my language. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That means, you know, there must be something I'm doing right then. No, no, I might be doing something right then. I don't know. Uh, you're the one that hit me. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> No, I did that. It's just heat of the moment. It was a good punch. Where did I hit you? The soda fix. It's a good shot. Good Don't shot. know how to do that better since then. <laughs> and you do remember what I did to you? Pinch me. I pinched him. Pinched me. Set me on me. I thought, why is he pinching me? <laughs> That's because he could have killed me. <laughs> Anyway, all of you that are watching this, uh, understand these these people like this weekend, I wish everybody could have been here. Everybody in the arts could have been here because you'll get a good example of what the martial arts, the martial arts spirit is all about. <clears throat> it's not about ranks. It's not about belts. It's about study and growth and learning. And Mr. Hutchback, very lucky man. He has had some of the greatest teachers and he's a great teacher himself. Anything you want to say? Uh, I'm humbled. I, I'm uh, extremely humbled to be, uh, you know, interviewed. I, this doesn't happen to me you know, very often, uh, particularly by a, a man of your, your knowledge and stature. And finding anything that I could say valuable at all, but you know, thank you for the opportunity just to be with you this weekend and, and uh, say hi and renew an old friendship. You got it. You got it. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.